Thank you. Well, we can move briskly, but uh, I'm here to represent our project called uh, Chorus. This is a project that's really focused on a specific domain of uh, critical care um, where uh, patients are taken care of in sort of the most intensive care environment. Um, part of the reason that we are taking on this project is that uh, in the ICU environment, there's been many tools to predict, uh, you know, uh, bad events, patient deteriorations, but we're finding at the FDA level that there's an expectation that these tools be validated. We really want to create the, the corpus on which uh, algorithms can be validated. And so uh, as a, I think an answer to that call, the NIH launched a program to develop uh, uh, projects that generate data, of which we're one. And the idea is that these data sets are ethically derived, and I'm not going to go as much into that detail today. Um, but the, the, or, the architecture and infrastructure of our project is spread across 20 sites. Fortunately, of these, 14 of these are uh, generating data. Um, and here are, you can see on the map are some of these sites. And the general uh, canonical problem that we're trying to solve is that patients at a baseline state in green are at risk for something bad. And you can see on the bottom, you know, a lot of these uh, types of problems in the intensive care unit environment. And we would like to serve as the uh, data set that will help people create uh, algorithms that can be validated to uh, generate alarms to predict these events. And we all know if you're in the ICU, in a 20-bed ICU, there will be about a million alarms that go off per year. And those are not the alarms we're talking about. We're talking about you know, uh, ones that are information that can give you a sense of a patient's high level of acuity. Um, and there's a second problem also in our environment, which is that we have patients who were, have uncertain potential for recovery. And uh, similar to looking for patients who have the risk for deteriorating, we also want to understand which patients are at the highest likelihood to recover. Um, and so our program is, is uh, designated into six uh, modular components, and you can see them here. I'll move through these uh, slides somewhat quickly. Um, but standards is a, a specific module in our program. And some pilot studies that came out of our, our network, some of which are, are um, you know, uh, in preparation now or under review, um, involved to look not only at the fingerprint of patients, but also at the fingerprint of care or, or their, therefore their interaction. Um, this is one of them that looks at a map of Massachusetts in regards to the neighborhoods from which people come to our hospital and the likelihood that they will either limit or withdraw care. So we would call this a DNR, DNI order, or, or comfort measure only care. And you can see on the right, the type of geographic um, uh, uh, fingerprint of certain regions that people live in where it's dark, you'll see low rates of withdrawal care, where it's bright, you'll see high rates. Uh, and that relates just to the geography uh, you know, from which patients are derived. And on the left, you'll see the factors that are important there. And the top eight or nine of them are, are, are structural or social determinants um, of health. And similarly, we've looked at diversity in care. And you can see on the left here, the number of, of I'm a neurologist, so neurologic assessments per day in an ICU may vary from eight in one hospital to 18 in another. So we are very much focused on the data-rich environment of the ICU where we can deeply endotype not just patients, but also their providers and, and how they care for patients. On the right here, you can see trends in recovery for very sick patients who arrive at the most uh, deep stages of coma. And you can see the one that I put an oval at, on the right as a hospital in which their coma scores don't get better over time. Uh, we don't think, we know that hospital, we don't think they're bad. They may actually be in this room, so we're not gonna you know, talk about them. But they may treat their patients differently with a principled uh, uh, point of view in mind, perhaps their sedation approach. So this, these are the reasons why we justify that we're going to collect, you know, deep uh, levels of, of detail on sedation, on treatment decisions, and so forth. And it's to prepare models like this, or what uh, the junior faculty in my lab prepared, which is to use uh, waveform data to predict coma recovery. And I won't go through this in detail, but we want to sit in that position. We can be useful to clinicians and, and family members um, to really have this data at hand. So. Um, Going through the, the modes that we have you know, uh, of, of modalities and, and the types of standards we're using, our general approach to our EHR data is to do OMOP transformation, but to develop a, a, a readable or writable um, interoperability with I2B2. And for imaging, um, uh, data will be originally derived in DICOM. And for waveforms, this is data that often we don't see in models of this scale and scope, and maybe the, the sort of signature feature of, of our 
consortium, uh, we will be using methods that were derived uh, from the MIT and um, Emory team using the waveform database format for waveforms, which is a hierarchical uh, uh, data format with a specific header. And uh, there, this is very similar to another standard called the uh, Critical Care Data Exchange Format, or CCDEF, CCDEF. Um, and these are built on an HDF5 uh, file type. And, and one of the key focuses of our project is to really embed labels and tags for these waveform data in uh, the OMOP setting and then therefore into the I, I2B2 setting. And I think this is something that has been challenging to do in general. Um, these are the types of mo uh, data modalities that we're speaking about in our project, imaging, physiologic data, electronic health record, structured and unstructured data, the social determinants that I spoke about um, that will be geocoded and then uh, linked to national uh, uh, databases. Um, and then what we call practice pattern metadata, which is the, the descriptors of the local environment, the distribution of care that goes on in the local environment that the patient is in based on sort of the thesis that I spoke about earlier. Um, these are some views of, of the types of uh, viewers that we think we need to develop uh, to make this data useful. This is a, a tool called IVE or image viewer in context and it shows what well, you can see in blue and orange tokens of events that may have occurred next to trends and then you know examples of waveforms at the bottom with with imaging and these contextual viewers are really helpful to adjudicate cases and also understand uh, cases in context now this is an example that i'll go through in a little bit of of a um, large language model benchmarking tool to try to in orange, develop tags. These tags are um, from uh, the tool MetaMap, and they derive tags. But we're looking at these concepts that are that are embedded in these, and asking um, experts, domain experts, to then adjudicate these. And we're going to benchmark this type of data against different language models. And we do have some preliminary data that will, is nice data that we're going to be showing at the, uh, one of the IEEE uh, BHI meetings coming up, um, which shows sort of the progression of some of these. Uh, large language models over time, as well as where they where they struggle. Um, for social determinants of health on the right most column, these are the data sources that we're drawing from. And I think the key aspect here is that this data is derived from geocodes of patients and these geocodes need to be extracted without passing ad address data to the web. Um, and we have done the proof of concept work that I showed you early on. Uh, to, to demonstrate that we can do that. Um, and in that, we're using the tool uh, DGauss to do that. Um, in terms of the collaborative approach, this is sort of a hub and spoke network uh, where our center is working with these other 13 data generation uh, uh, groups. The goal is to provide a, a platform where they can um, develop their data and sort of bring it through um, a redaction process privately in their local cloud or or enclave and then share it locally. The corpus that we're looking to generate is 112,000 um, ICU admissions. And the goal is that these would be de-identified um, in a way we consider thorough locally at the site before they're shared centrally. And the rules for our project are, is that these data, the 112K, uh, uh, are required to be shared publicly. We've thought about, and offline, happy to talk to any of you about a concept of holding a holdout data set for validation. Um, and that gets to sort of the opening slide I had about, you know, there's not great prescription about how uh, validation and, and regulatory approval for algorithms should take place. Um, some highlights of some of the other tools that we've developed um, include some privacy search and redaction tools. Uh, this is work by the team led by Xiaoshen uh, Zhang um, at UT Houston. Um, we've tried commercial tools, for example, a Microsoft's Presidio tool for uh, pixel level uh, DICOM de-identification and, and found these on actual um, sort of fabricated cases to be uh, relatively workable, although we've yet to try them on diff more difficult modalities like ultrasound. And then um, we've, we've, we've have a project plan. We're now in uh, the end of year one of four. Uh, to do a, a process called differential privacy, where especially for this type of geographically derived uh, uh, social determinants that we perturb the data a little bit to put noise into it so that it's not perfectly re-identifiable. We, we recognize that this is quite challenging with waveform level time series data. Um, and so this will not likely extend to the entirety of our, of our project. 
Um, very briefly, I can show you a video-based demo of some of the tooling environment. Uh, there are different tiles you can see here. The first one is a AFib detector. In the top right, you can see some of the colors there. We have some automated um, tools that suggest the correct label. These are geared towards making annotation and labeling much faster. And so you can see here, uh, when you click on auto label, it's suggesting this purple label. The next case is suggesting this teal one on the top right. You can export these, these labels uh, when you're done. Um, to speed through some of this, you can just to, uh, for time, there are other tools where you can yourself label sections and then give them a label for waveform data. Um, this is the LLM labeler that I referred to. We have another tool, which is sort of, um, I'll go back here, a benchmarking tool. And so you can see some of the questions are asked, how factually accurate, relevant, complete, logical, or clear it is. And there are other questions about, is this a current concept or an old concept? Should it be negated as no congestive heart failure or, or not as yes, congestive heart failure? So those are sort of some of the tools that we're, we're building in that environment. And then um, if I just move through this a little bit further, um, I'll come to, I think, the conclusion there. So um, a different plank, and maybe it'll pique the interest of some in the audience here, are really what data is appropriate to share? Um, what is the line between research and clinical? Historically, it's been quite clear, but I think for many of us, um, we need to really think carefully about the risks of not sharing data as well as the risks of sharing data. And, um, and then lastly, we have some training modules that uh, are part of our project that are funded by NIH where we were hosting and funding some travel grants for junior, junior trainees. So um, that's a tour of some of the work that we're doing and we hope we can give an update um, soon and appreciation to uh, Jeff, who's part of our project team and working specifically on the interoperability to I2B2. So thank you um, and thanks for listening. <laughs>